May you live in the spine. May you live in the spine. I first heard the term, may you live in the spine, when I read it in a translation of the Bhagavad Gita. First off, my name is Jacob Adams. I'm a fitness and leadership coach. I help people just like you get to the next level, whether it's in the gym, getting more muscle strength, burning fat, designing a supplement program, uh, nutrition, uh, world-class supplementation, and high nootropics. On YouTube, a lot of my work focuses on psychology, leadership skills, breakthroughs, mental mindsets, the things that we need to get to the next level, the elusive <laughs> next level. Have you ever wondered what that means? Have you heard it? Do you even care what it means to live in the spine? In reading the book, the Bhagavad Gita, it was a translation. I got this book, I got the hard copy, believe it or not, in 2008. It wasn't until 2012, though, where I actually got the Kindle version and began reading it. It's funny, right? Books, sometimes we get them knowing we want to read them, but sometimes we're not really in a fertile place to get the message until we're ready to get the message. The book went on to how sometimes yogis in India carry staffs with them in order to remind them to live centered in the spine. You know, it's not the first time the spine came to the conversation. You know, chakras are aligned in the spine. I've made videos about how there's, you know, the chakras, chakras for bros. I talked about that, et cetera, et cetera. And my fascination with staffs started to take place. This is one I got for a costume. I'll, I'll likely use this this year. Um, I got this particular staff for a costume for Halloween. And I started to ask myself and look at understanding this concept of living in the spine. A lot of my videos, some of the more popular ones here on YouTube, revolve around sexual transmutation. That is to take creative sexual energy that is literally uh, created in the, in the testicles for men, for example, and to transmute it, to channel it, to channel it into another focus, another focus of productivity. And I want to take a moment today to connect the two, to connect the two ideas. And then again, for what? For what purpose? To get to the next level of understanding. Well, I think at first glance, when you think about the, the concept, may you live in the spine, it's pretty, sounds pretty trivial, doesn't it? May you live in the spine. That's like six words, right? Is there anything there for you, really? Is, it sounds pretty freaking vague to me at first glance, right? May you live in the spine. Oh, thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> May I live in the fucking spine? Okay, thanks. Now, upon further investigation, though, and practice, and committing to a more abstinent life, committing to one, a life of conserving sexual energy in its rawest form, meaning straight up, you know, semen in, in the testicles, to be quite blunt, but just so we are clear that, that I'm literally talking about holding an orgasm or preventing orgasms to ejaculation, right? The dispensing of ejaculation for a pointless objective, maybe just pleasure to the pleasure of release, right? The pleasure of release being the only objective, no other objective but that. Let's just say for the sake of living in the spine, I'm gonna go ahead and make a courageous decision here and say that is a pointless reason to ejaculate. Yes, of course, pleasure is in and of itself a reason, but for the sake of living in the spine in this video, in this particular frame, we will say it's pointless. Again, I'm fully aware that there's a pleasure to releasing. I am not stupid. 
I am a very attuned individual. I wouldn't be able to make this video to counter to that position if I didn't know that the position existed. Got it? I'm looking to illustrate the two concepts and how they connect. Okay, so one of the things that got me really into you know, this on a deeper level is when I started seeing the correlation, like David Data's book, The Weight of the Superior Man, right? He goes into how, you know, conserving uh, orgasm is, is something that allows a man to reach higher levels of consciousness and higher levels of understanding within himself. He goes into things like, uh, with doing so, a man can experience his edge and start to get an idea of where his edge is. Now, let's just say, like, okay, we're like six minutes into the video. If you could still be watching this video and I haven't fucking bored you, you're already like, I think another level of understanding because I've already talked about shit like chakras, living in the spine, holding, uh, you know, an orgasm, other purposes to an orgasm besides pleasure. Like you have to understand, like that's already like an entire level, like an entire level of understanding. Like that, everybody else, that's not watching right now, they're like, no, this orgasm is only for pleasure and fuck the chakras and there is no such thing as living in the spine. This guy's nuts with his fucking staff. You got it? Like, duh, that reality exists. That's a very Western kind of face value uh, <laughs> way of thinking. Like, I get it. So people watching this far are kind of already starting to connect the dots as to, okay, okay, so he's talking about conserving sexual energy. He's talking about you know, how it connects to living in the spine. You talk about the good Bhagavad Gita. So you, so way the superior man, David Data. So I'm cutting the dots for you that allows you to sort of see that the research that, that I've done in my own experience to get you this video and, and these concepts are some of um, like true experience here. Like, okay, for example, I, I haven't had, I think an orgasm for over a month like, uh, or a ejaculatory release, so I'll just say it at that. Now, you could say to yourself, yeah, that's a lot of information. It's not, if you think about sexual transmutation, it's not if you think about, like, what my objective is, like living in the spine, right? You see, meditation is a tool that I use to, like, dial in on energy and to, like really connect within my own being and soul and to like let the dust settle and accept my soul and create a space, a space for God to like manifest himself within me, like creating this, this empty, like silent space where I can listen to God. Right? So, creating the space does something different. The opposite of creating space, I'm gonna give you the opposite of creating space and living in the spine. The opposite is anxiety. The opposite is not accepting. The opposite is fighting with reality. That is the opposite of living in the spine, of meditation. It doesn't mean that fighting is incorrect, fighting is very good, but what are you fighting for? What are you fighting for and is what you're fighting for in alignment with the higher ideals within yourself? Because if they are in the highest, if you're fighting for something, at the highest ideal of yourself and your highest intelligence, then if you were to die in that fight on some level, you've completed a purpose. Because we're all gonna die fighting. Even if you die on your hospital bed because you're fighting cancer, even if you die in some terrible accident or what you're all you're gonna die fighting I mean seldomly will you just die like you're dead done you know you're gonna die fighting 
But is what you're fighting for in alignment with your highest ideals? You see, in my, what I've then come to the conclusion is that living in the spine is to design your reality. Living in the spine is to design your own reality, to own your destiny in the face of all challenges. So how do we do it? How do we live in the spine? Well, first off, I would say, let's not get ahead of ourselves and let's not assume that it could be done all the time and it has to be some perfect process that you just get, okay? Like to get to where I'm at now has taken years, years of like internal disciplines, like internal acceptances, meditations, failures, feedbacks, like so much has gone into like just my understanding, which is not of another world. Like my understanding is, I think it's, it's, it's esoteric. My level of understanding is esoteric at this point. It's, it's, it's accessible only to a few that actually go to the work. I would say that, but it, it's not so out of this world because you can understand it. Like, let's just say you can intellectualize it. Like, okay, so he's conserving his sexual energy and he's meditating, he's creating space for God. He's like, and then he's pulling in that energy and centering in the spine. And so therefore he's anti, it's like the anti-anxiety. See, if you, you see how you got that? Like, so anxiety is like here, right? Like your anxiety. And then so if, say you breathe, and you pull energy up into the spine and into the third eye, right? And you create this space and all of a sudden tranquility falls upon you. And by holding sexual energy, you have a charge, like this physical charge in your body. And that charge allows you to push objectives that, that you're after. Making a video is an objective I'm after, right? And so imagine, let's see, look at let's look at the let's look at the backdrop. Let's just say instead I were to have sex and ejaculate or uh, masturbate or whatever, and I just want to like eat and just feel good and recover, right? I'm probably gonna have a lower self-esteem, right? I'm probably gonna be in front of the camera, or something like uh, like a little, a little spent. But as you could probably see, I'm not that. You could probably see I'm kind of energized. You could probably see, and, and like, it's not a joke. Like, I'm not faking this. Like, this is like truly energy, like being, that I'm like manifesting. Like, I'm literally consciously manifesting energy within me by choice. I'll say that again. See, like, energy is not something that just happens. Creating energy is not something that just occurs. You don't just wake up and your energy is fine. One of my mentors, Brendan Burchard, said, he likes to consistently refer to the power plant metaphor. He says, the power plant doesn't have energy. The power plant generates energy. And by that same token, the generation of energy is a discipline that must be practiced. And so, Meditation is a practice. It's a scientific practice of drawing in energy from the limbs, right? From the external limbs, the nervous energy, the, the beating of the feet, the mental energy here that's like thinking wildly and the calming of the mind, the stillness, drawing it into the centering of the spine through the chakras, bringing it up into a higher consciousness, putting it into the third eye and like really just dialing in on that center, right? And in that center, in that centerness, in that oneness, there is a more calm acceptance of the realities of what we are, of all we are, of all that is. And in that acceptance of all that is and all we are, we're able to engage and, and let like space flow through us. Like the answers and, and, and that which is flows through us. Now, naturally, someone watching this could think I'm insane. Because it's, it's too fucking esoteric. It's too fucking holistic. It's too fucking like new agey and shit. And, and, and I get that. Like, but, but these are like secrets of like, these are like secrets that powerful people yield. And, and like they share them. It's just, it's hard to give up like, 
Look, we live in a world where sex is like considered like the hottest thing ever. Like it, it's considered like the ultimate and it's sold as the ultimate. And to be blunt, it is one of the ultimates. Like it, it in the Garden of Eden, um, like sex is pretty much what made Adam fall, right? It was sex. Like it was the higher consciousness of man went down into the body and man became aware of the fruit and the fruit is has been linked to being known as the genitals, meaning Adam took a bite of the fruit, which was Eve's. Well, I'll let you finish that sentence for yourself. And so sex is in itself a, a high level of energy, a collision of two creative beings coming together to create, to manifest a type, a human being, a collision of energy, a collision, a, a like sperm and egg meet and create an energy, right? Like almost like an explosion, like an atom bomb, right? Like if you think about what a human is, it's, it's almost like, 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 like a metaphoric atom bomb. Yeah? And so I think that prior to Prior to, let's just say, when I, when I think about my life prior to 2008, where I had absolutely no experience with yoga, no experience with meditation, absolutely no experience with sexual transmutation at all, no, no, no experience with like conserving the sexual charge and the orgasm, absolutely no experience at all. I think that if I would have heard me speak right now, I would think I was fucking insane, personally, because... I'd be, I was more interested in pornography, having sex with my girlfriend, like loving the sensual raw power of just like getting off. Like I liked that primarily. And so to hear myself now, like if I could meet myself then, I, I, I think we're just two polar opposites as to where I was. I think that the guy me then would probably be jealous that somebody else understood something that he may not have. And the me here understands fully where that animalistic, more raw, just like animalistic nature of myself, that that's all I had at that time. So it's, it's up to you really. Like, do you believe that there's a potential that there's something more than sex available to do with your sexual energy, to draw in energy into the spine, to the chakras, and to let that awaken to like, like show you that there's more capacity within you to expand within yourself? Is that something that you're able to even process that may be a potential? I'm willing to bet that as you get older, that probably will be something that you look into because you will get bored with like the monotony of just like sex being something that is some standard titillation, pornographic, release of masturbation, get someone, have sex with them, go through the drama of like arguing, like jealousies and stuff like that. You would get to the point where you want more mastery over yourself, your schedule, your productivity, and your wealth. And that's where may you live in the spine become something to consider. So let's just say you, you are interested in living in the spine. Let's just say you would be considering it. The first thing to do would be to meditate. Oh gee, there I go again, right? Meditation. So get to that. There's courses available online. I made a course myself on Udemy. Maybe I'll post it below if I remember. I don't know. I don't really care because yes, I want you to get my course. Yes, I want you to start, but it's up to you really. And meditation is so fucking hard like to still the mind to commit to it that at the end of the day, like, do you want it or not? Like, are you going to do the work to do it or not? Like I still have to calm my mind down. I've meditated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, hundreds of hours or a lot. Right. And I still have to be like, Jacob, go sit down and meditate. Oh, but I'm brushing my teeth or, Oh, but, uh, Jacob, Go sit down and meditate. So it's hard. You got to meditate. You got to learn to do whatever it takes to get there. Secondly, would be to, in that process of meditation, start conserving your orgasm, whether it's, you know, a week at a time, two weeks at a time, three weeks at a time. I'm at my best streak so far, like at over 40 days or so. So whatever it is, to, but it's take, it's taken me a lot of desire and willfulness and like strength, inner strength, trials, tribulations, desire to grow. 
like desire, see, seeing the patterns of my past to get to this point. It's taken a lot, like a, a, a fucking lot to get here. So conserve the orgasm and see how that starts like you're going to get more anxious because the orgasm is like energy. And so you're going to have to meditate to like bring it into the chakras, into the spine and into the higher consciousness. Like I probably wouldn't be able to do it if I didn't meditate. I probably would not be able to harness my sexual energy if I didn't meditate. That's, that's kind of like the whole thing. That's why I started with meditation. So drawing energy to the spine, living in the spine, sexual transmutation, it's like a thing. It's like a package. Like you have to will it. And then, and then you'll notice like, wow, I'm tapping into other areas of my, my consciousness or don't, or just ignore me and just think I'm crazy as I, you know, with all my other videos or whatever, you can do that too. I don't give a shit. Okay, so, uh, subscribe, comment below. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. I know I did. Peace.